Hi, it's Valerie from My Stitch and Dollyverse. Today I'm gonna show you how I make dolly clothes. <laughs> Let's go! So if you're new here, hi, my name is Valerie. I'm a former fashion and costume designer. I am a doll collector. And on my channel, I review new dolls, shop for thrifted vintage dolls, and I love sewing fashions for dolls. And I want to teach you how to do that. So I have these patterns that I printed off on Etsy. I have different ones. This one I think I showed you last week. It's cool about, the patterns because the pieces are so small um, it has like all the instructions usually with the book like a little you know fold out booklet thing like regular patterns and it shows you like how to sew this and little tricks and techniques when it comes to sewing miniature because it is different um, but like this one has the piece on it, but then it also has instructions. So I would copy this one again because I don't want to cut up this page and lose it. Also, since this is a print off, I probably will go ahead and um, number or label this somehow so I don't lose the order. Put them in binders with in plastic sleeves to keep them nice and then once I cut out the patterns I can just put it in like a small baggie and put it in the sleeve to keep it all together. I have a collection of different size doll patterns and this says important use glue sparingly so this is actually a hat pattern where it has these little stars on the pattern is where you glue it and where it has the little stitches is where you sew it. There's a beach bag, there's a cape, and obviously this is made so you don't have to sew it, but I'm not a glue person. <laughs> I love vintage sewing techniques. I don't want to glue things. I mean, when it comes to making silly little shoes, I mean, obviously that's for kids. And here's the pattern for sewing a garment together there's it tells you how to clip it to lay it flat and to press it how to sew the collar and then also to put how to put the elastic in the casing and of course this is going to be very small elastic and when these patterns were made they were made many many years ago so supplies for certain kinds of things like really small elastic will be different you probably would use like I have some cording elastic. I wouldn't use the thread elastic, which is really thin and it doesn't hold its shape very well. This would be more like a cording elastic to bead jewelry. And it's pretty, pretty round, but it would work for this in particular. Then the teeny tiny snaps, you can buy those. Um, I have a supply of some of these from I think estate sales. I've had friends just give them. That's one thing. If you're a doll collector <laughs> and you do things like sew doll clothes, tell everybody. I've had friends give me so many different little doll things like, you know, vintage uh, clothes pins and stuff like that. That's really cute and it can add to your collection. But when it comes to stuff like this too, I've had people give me teeny tiny cards of, you know, the small snaps, which is what you want to use. So we will go through and make one of these garments. This is the, not sure which one I want to do. I do like the little swimsuit. It's cute and that little cape, this dress, the skirts. I really like this dress. That might be something I do later. But the cool thing about it is that every single piece on the pattern, it shows you here. It has H, G, F, that's the look. And on here, it says there's an F, that's how you cut it out. It has some of the pieces have to be on the bias, so it's it's going in the diagonal. Once you figure that out, <laughs> this is really small. Here's the pictures of the back of the look because on the photograph, I mean not the photographs, but on the drawings, it only gives you the front view. And when you're sewing and doing technical stuff, you want to kind of see what it looks like on the back. Make sure you're doing it right. You know, here's all the back pieces. Oh, it's so cute. 
I love it. The next piece of the pattern is instructions. So I kind of like that I got these printed out and they're flat and they're not like a big folded piece of paper that's hard to like look and not rip, especially the vintage ones on the creases. You gotta be careful. And it tells you each skirt and each item um, by the letter, again, it's hand sewing techniques, which is really cute. It tells you how to do a chain stitch, um, which makes this little loop for her hand for this little megaphone <laughs> for the cheerleader. And then it shows you the inside and how you make things flat and where you make them flat for where you put the buttons. I mean, nowadays too, they have doll Velcro, but as we all know, it gets hooked on everything. It snags hair I and mean, the hair synthetic. It's going to pull it and then it's going to be all messed up. So I'd rather not use any kind of Velcro. Velcro is not my friend. I like to use snaps. We will go through and decide like which one we want to do. I don't want to really do a teeny tiny collar right now. <laughs> it's cute too because it gives you like a little idea how to do French knots. How to sew this bag. What's fun about this too is that it is all vintage style and it's vintage sewing techniques. Another thing to note is that the pattern number, which is 7311, and it's McCall's pattern. So you'll see on any kind of the pattern pieces, except for the very tiny ones, it'll say McCall 7311. And if it's not on it, like these little teeny tiny shoe pieces, you can just, because there's a lot of writing on the front, you could just turn them over once you cut it out and write that number on there and write, you know, that it's the shoe and here it says for felt or leather because this piece will get cut off and thrown away. You want to have all that information to remember and then put them in baggies per garment or look and you can say, you know, garment A or garment B and then put it behind this in like a binder. It's just a good way to keep track of it because they are small pieces and you cut it out and you're like, what does this go to? <laughs> what is this supposed to be? <laughs> so more information is better, but just don't write all over the pattern where you can't tell what's going on. To go a step further, <laughs> this is me and my organizing. You could print this out a few more times and then cut out the little image of the lady on one of the printouts and put it in there with the garment. That way you're like, oh yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it makes it so much easier when you go back and sew it again. For the poncho, it says what type of fabric to buy or use. And it says fabric or terry cloth. Um, fabric meaning, I guess, cotton. And then for these pants, it says cotton or fine corduroy. And this one says silk, rayon, or cotton which definitely tells you that this is a vintage pattern because of course there's so many new um, synthetic fabrics. Back then it was just uh, rayon, which is actually a natural but man-made fabric. Where I go to get the fabric is the thrift store because you can find vintage styles of fabric there and just upcycle it into a garment. It's hard to find that very fine corduroy if that's the look that you're going for for the pants. It's kind of difficult to find that. And then of course, when you're looking uh, secondhand or for any fabric, you have to make sure that the scale of the pattern is the right scale for the doll. You don't want these giant like checkers for this teeny tiny doll, right? It has to be the right scale. So that's kind of fun when you go to the thrift store and you're looking at clothes. You can even bring your doll with you if you're doing this for Barbie, which is what the size is for. And then just kind of putting your doll up, draping like some fabric over her and seeing like if this looks good, if this is the right scale, if this would be a good dress. Of course, it has to do with drape as well. If you want like a full skirt, you don't, you're not gonna use like a t-shirt in it. It's just gonna drape and fall flat. You want kind of more of a crisp fabric to do that. Plus you would probably make an underskirt, which I don't think this one has, but it's easy to make because it does say for the circle skirts to use felt, which felt is different now. It was more wool felt. And if you do find a wool felt, that would be really cute. That would look super vintage. Felt obviously is gonna hold its shape. 
so if you want it to be a cotton or something you want it to be more crisp I'm gonna do dress E it just has two pieces the front and the back and what's cool about the pattern is that it actually even shows you exactly where the snaps go right there there and there cool one thing to know is that this pattern is obviously for a vintage size Barbie I am gonna take this made to move that I made hairdresser doll I really loved her hair and I put her on a made to move body so I'm gonna take her with me and drape some fabric to get the right scale but then I probably will make it for another doll I call this doll my Elizabeth Montgomery doll. <laughs> Elizabeth Montgomery looks like the vintage Barbie it's one of the silkstone dolls this hat another fashionista but it looked perfect on her with her dress and then <laughs> some toys that came out that were like classic movie people the dolls are really strange they're short they're really they're only about this big I think it does look like her but this looks more like her so I just put this little kitty cat down here so I want to make this dress for her because it's the right era for Bewitched. <laughs>
So a few things I want to note. This is the shirt I used. Um, I only cut out just a little bit. <laughs> I can use it again for other ones. A couple of things. I need to press this dress. I need a little ironing board, which I'm going to order online. So it doesn't look that great because it looks a little wrinkly. But the fit is good. I had to take it in. One reason is that this fabric is a little bit stretchy and I wanted it to be more fitted than like a, you know, a sheath dress. And then the darts were really funky. So I just made like this little seam in the front, which is very, I, I have like the sixties um, design in mind, which I will show you. And then also, because I made it kind of quickly, the armholes aren't exactly the same size, so um, they're close. But because of that, it kind of pulled on one side. Usually when there's a little pulling or tucking, it's actually kind of pointing to the problem. And the problem is, is that one of these arms, armholes are too small. So I used lace as the binding around the neck and the armhole instead of just clipping it and sewing it flat i thought that the lace was a better like finish to it and then i also just used the hem of the shirt because it's already pressed and made um, but obviously it needs to be pressed but the fit is so much better when i did do that and as you know maybe you know this doll came with this little plastic body thing on and that's because um, of this dress it's black and when you have black material, it will dye the doll that color. So they did this plastic thing to protect it. It's supposed to come off, but if I'm gonna keep that dress on her, I'm gonna keep this on. And it's just taped in the back. I am gonna take it off to have this dress on there when I'm finally finished. You also have to keep in mind that their hands don't come off. Um, if you do have a doll with hands that come off, then you can make a tighter sleeve and a tighter armhole. But um, since she does not, you have to kind of make it a certain size. But you can see that little tuck right there, it's pointing to the problem. And it's not that big of a problem, it's just this armhole. So this is kind of the mock-up, just to see how this fabric works. Since this is an upcycled dress, since I have a lot more material, I'm gonna use the actual fabric to get the right fit um, because each fabric stretches and moves differently. But I feel like it's super cute. Have this little thing here, which is cool with the checker because it kind of breaks up that pattern and you can see that there's a yoke. And I did have to take in more of the dart in the back as well and shape that better. What I did actually was just trial and error. I just took it in a little bit more, about a 16th of an inch at the meat of the dart yeah and then made the points longer it was one of those like uh football kind of pointed shapes um back dart so i had to take it in a little bit more and make it longer for it to fit her better but of course this doll is not like the original barbie size she's bigger she's taller but i took it in because i wanted it to be a little bit more fitted so it's cute though. I like the wide open neckline like that. But just to take notes of what I need to change on the pattern so I know when I make the next one. Also to take note that she does have an upper torso that moves side to side. So when I am fitting her, I gotta make sure that she's straight and not like this. Otherwise the dress won't work out and it'll be kinda weird on one side. Okay, <laughs> so I made a second dress out of the same fabric. Um, this one I did not use the full hem of the shirt. I did cut it at the bottom, um, but this time I put these little darts right up here because of that pole right here. And basically, if you're gonna have a dress with no like shoulder seam here and it and it goes off of your shoulders, it's going to have a crease here, even with our clothes, right? It's just 
part of it. <laughs> it just drives me crazy. I just like things to fit really well. Um, but it's just the nature of that design. So anyways, I did put the back darts um, in and then this dart, I just made it to be across like that. Give the style line here. It just looked better than these pointy darts right here. It just didn't work. And then the dart here. And I finished it again with the lace. The armholes always seem to get really small, but it's okay. It fits her really well. Um, and I did make it a little bit longer because I didn't keep the original hem. So it's a little bit longer, which I feel looks better on her. Let me try it on. So here it is. I still have her plastic bodysuit on, but the fit is better right here. There's not that um, tuck anymore or that little pucker, you know, and it still needs to have a better press, but I did get a tailor's point. It's coming in the mail. So excited to get all these little pressing uh, jobs better. Yeah, tell me what you think of this dress. I really do like this style and I feel like this plaid is the perfect size and scale for her. I really like it. I think it's super cute. It's perfect for her style and her size. I just need to do the snaps up the back and clean up all the little threads and press it better. So yay, I'm very excited about this. It was a bit of a chore because this fabric is a bit wiggly and it doesn't stretch but it moves very easily especially when you're cutting it so it's kind of difficult to work with but maybe next time we'll use a different fabric with this design i'm going to make some other dresses with this top and maybe they'll be easier to sew and fit so thank you for watching make sure to subscribe and i'll see you next week